For months now, Hong Kong and the mass demonstrations there have been making headlines. But there's another story with some similar elements unfolding just across the South China Sea in Taiwan. There's been a tug of war over Taiwan ever since 1949, when the island nation won de facto independence from mainland China. Beijing wants to get Taiwan back, has made diplomatic efforts over the years to do so, even resorting to occasional military threats. And the news media are now a weapon and a flashpoint in this conflict. Earlier this year, thousands of Taiwanese protested against what they call red media, domestic news outlets controlled by pro-Beijing owners and accused of, if not taking their editorial orders directly from the mainland, voluntarily towing the Communist Party's line in exchange for access to the mammoth Chinese market. And there's a lot to play for right now. A presidential election is just a few months away. A showdown between a pro-independence candidate on one side and a pro-Beijing candidate on the other. The Listening Post's Johanna Hoos now from Taipei on red media and the battle for hearts, minds and votes in Taiwan. <laughs> Sunday, June 23rd. There were torrential rains in Taiwan's capital, Taipei. However, that didn't deter protesters, nearly 100,000 of them, from turning up to demonstrate against what they call red media, or Hongmei, in Mandarin. The weather that day was really bad. We were speaking on a stage and we saw people gathering and listening to us. I have to say, as one of the organizers of the protest, I was deeply moved. There were young people standing two to three hours in the rain because their motherland and the freedom and democracy they so cherish is under threat. The term red media itself is relatively new. No, obviously, the, the, the color red is associated with uh, the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, so red China, uh, red media. So this is a reference to media, both uh, traditional and social media, online media, content farms, uh, Facebook pages and, and whatnot that are deemed to be influenced by or if not controlled by uh, the Chinese Communist Party. Taiwan's status has been in dispute since 1949. That was the year the Chinese Communist Party, led by Mao Zedong, overthrew the government of Chiang Kai-shek, leader of the Kuomintang Party. Chiang's forces fell back to Taiwan, claiming that they were still the legitimate government of all of China. Beijing has never relinquished its claim to the islands. For 70 years, China has been flexing its muscles, both economic and military, involving itself in Taiwan's political affairs, and more recently, in its media. When tens of thousands of Taiwanese took to the streets earlier this year to protest the so-called red media, they had one primary target, the Want Want Group. Based in the office behind me, Want Want's media outlets, including its most prominent newspaper, the China Times, stand accused of serving as a media mouthpiece for China's Communist Party, pushing blatant pro-Beijing propaganda. In addition to the China Times, the Want Want Group owns CTV and CTI TV, one of Taiwan's most widely watched TV channels. The company didn't get its start in the news business, though. It is Taiwan's largest manufacturer of rice crackers and soft drinks. For the company and its chairman Tsai Engmeng, mainland China is not only a mega market, but one that, according to an analysis of Want One's financial statements, has netted them nearly 15.3 billion new Taiwanese dollars in subsidies since 2007. That makes China worth staying on good terms with. The way in which Want One pushes Chinese propaganda is infamous, and I'm not just talking about its actions this last year or so. There's a long history to this. The group's chairman, Tsai Yang Meng, took control of the China Times in 2008. The paper began to change dramatically over the following years as it aligned itself with Beijing and its goal of reunification. Investors like Want One don't buy Taiwanese companies to generate profits. 
They use them as political assets in their dealings with Beijing. After Want Want took over China Times and CTI TV, they started to avoid reporting or were at least downplaying topics that Chinese authorities find sensitive, such as Falun Gong, the Tiananmen Square massacre, the Taiwanese independence movement, of course, and most recently their attitude towards this year's Hong Kong protests. Even more telling are the stories Want Want's media outlets do cover and how they report them. For instance, Beijing and its approach to reunification. Want Want's coverage in the run-up to Taiwan's presidential election in January next year has also caught the attention of anti-red media campaigners. The incumbent president, Tsai Ing-wen, supports independence. Beijing has thrown its weight behind her opponent, Han Kuo Yu, who is more China-friendly. And across Want Want's outlets, it's Han Kuo Yu who gets the lion's share of coverage. A study by Taiwan's National Communications Commission reported that in May this year, CTI TV gave 70% of its airtime to Han. We contacted Want Want to speak with them about their coverage and the criticism it has attracted. So we've been emailing and calling back and forth with the Want Want group for a few weeks now, and we thought that we were pretty close to locking down an interview, but just now my producer Joyce here got a call from the president of the China Times. What exactly did he say? Yes, so Mr. Wang Feng called me and said that after having gone through our request and the outline of points we want to discuss with him, he doesn't want to give us an interview. He said that our line of argument is biased and hostile and that um, he will give us a written statement and nothing more. Here's what the statement said. According to the Taiwanese constitution, Taiwan and mainland China are part of the same nation. Our news reporting is carried out in accordance with this principle. Yet we are vilified for this, while those who violate the constitution are supported. How absurd is that? We have a firm editorial policy to not accept foreign influence. Some individuals, as well as the foreign media, have deliberately defamed the Want Want group. We have already issued a firm statement of denial on this matter. We have also begun legal proceedings. One of those legal proceedings is a defamation lawsuit against the British publication, The Financial Times. Earlier this year, the paper ran a report in which they quoted anonymous China Times and CTI TV journalists, who said that their outlets received daily editorial instructions from the Taiwan Affairs Office, the Chinese government department that deals with Taiwan issues. That alleged lack of journalistic independence has pushed some employees to leave the company for good. I'm on my way to meet Liao Yaosheng, who is a former journalist at the China Times. He resigned earlier this year over what he says is Beijing's significant influence on Want Want's editorial line. <laughs> Other people, other officials on the front page all look very ugly, all look very odd, while Mr. Han looks very decent. I didn't hold a senior enough position in the company to receive direct guidance from Chinese government officials. People at my level only receive orders from the top managers in the company. However, the editorial line and the content that the management like to cover is quite obvious to employees. I don't think any manager at the Want Want Group would ever admit it, but I do believe that there is guidance coming from China. You put your resignation letter online and it was shared widely. Why did you decide to do that? And what do you think it was about your message to Want Want that clearly spoke to so many Taiwanese? I put my letter out there hoping that it could provoke some discussion of the issues facing this media company. I wanted to make public the wrongs of the Want Want Group. I was actually quite surprised by the reaction. It's not like I was a senior member of Want Want, I was just a junior staff journalist. 
However, it was clear that Taiwanese citizens are actually quite concerned about certain media outlets disrupting public opinion and damaging our democratic and legal systems. Accusations of Beijing's influence in the Taiwanese media space don't end with want want and mainstream media outlets. There is a suspicion that China is using a host of other media methods to spread its message, both on and off the web. There also are a series, a number of new media, so websites and Facebook pages, uh, that are now through analysis are being linked uh, to IP addresses back in China. And these content firms, these websites, uh, generate a lot of disinformation favoring certain candidates, but also putting uh, President Tsai uh, in a clear disadvantage as well. If you ask me to speculate, I would be very surprised if Beijing were not doing this, but a lot of it comes from within Taiwan as well. Now, whether all of this is actually having an impact on voter decisions uh, is something that the entire world is in the process of, of learning about and assessing. I think both Taiwanese civil society and the government should take more effective measures to improve the public's ability to distinguish between real news and propaganda. What we worry about most is what kind of impact this fake news from Beijing is having on our society. When people are making important political decisions, how much are they affected by fake news? And do they have access to accurate information? This is vital to the quality of Taiwanese democracy.